so I've been having, I've been having reconnecting with some people, um, some friends and colleagues like you, mm -hmm. and uh, I've just been recording these sessions. If we share it or not, it's mm -hmm. at least there's an option to share it. That's and awesome. I got inspired to maybe start a podcast again. So mm -hmm. this may be a podcast episode. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never so, know. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question you asked me earlier, which is like, I was, I was talking about how as of three weeks ago, I've been making five videos a week. Mm -hmm. But even before that last year, I made over a hundred videos. And last year was a, an experiment to get into practicing making video, um, not knowing whether any of it will be any good. Mm -hmm. And I found out that, you know, um, I would say probably one out of every, um, one out of every five was pretty good. Like, you know, liked more than others. And shared, liked and shared as the metric, shared. right? Yeah. Well, I would say one out of every five were more liked than mm -hmm. the others. And I'd say probably one out of every 10 were shared. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I would say probably one out of every 10 I'm like really proud of, uh, even though it was casual. It was all casual. It was like yeah. dog walk yeah. videos, like walking the dog and then just talking about some idea that I had as I walked the dog. So um, now I'm doing the videos in the office, like right. this backdrop. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I'm making it, uh, I'm making the videos with, with a course in mind. So I'm mm -hmm. making it bit by bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taken a lot more discipline to do it because well and they're more structured right the videos they're more are structured they're more thought out i have notes that i'm like kind of reading sometimes yeah uh, versus just walking the dog and just talking you know shoot, shooting the breeze and in, into the camera right right so so yeah i'm making videos now like they're either they're usually if, like anywhere between five and 20 minutes per video mm -hmm. turn these into a udemy course uh my models i'm I'm my models giving all the content away. So it's going to be free Udemy course, but it's going to be mm -hmm. like a structured course. Right. So the cool, cool, cool thing about this is as I publish each video, I get to see what the, what the feedback is, you know, mm -hmm. certain videos only liked a few times, certain videos are liked a few dozen times or shared. so you're going to know what to include. So I'll know, yeah, I'll know like maybe what to say more about in, in the course. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not really doing much with promoting each video. I'm really even, I'm just even pu publishing it on, I'm putting it on YouTube. Of course, I'm putting it on my Google Plus, which gets almost no views right on Google <laughs> Plus. On LinkedIn, gets very few views. Twitter, very few views. I put it on my Facebook fan page, which gets more, a few more views, mm -hmm. uh, which you probably know, videos on Facebook get way more views than videos on YouTube, in my yeah. experience. Yeah. Like 10 times more. Yeah. Like right now, that's the case. So, but I don't even, I don't even share my fan page videos to my timeline yet. I'm still a little bit shy about that. So I'm anyway, putting them on my fan page and it's kind of the, kind of the, the, the flow is going to go from video to the good ones to blog post mm -hmm. to a, uh, the good blog post to a downloadable workbook mm -hmm. and then the videos to a course. And then eventually the best of all that into a book. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love how it's, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're calling out the best of the best. Yeah. Like the, the, nothing is ever, nothing is ever the end, the end product. Yeah. It's always, yeah. Oh, it's always a work in progress. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> you know? And so this is helping me to not invest my, um, I guess, self-worth or, you know, my, uh, my value, my worth in, into any one thing that I put out there. It's just mm -hmm. always a work in progress. Yeah. In my mind. yeah. So then I'm really, I hold loosely to the results. That's beautiful. It's do the work. Yeah. In some ways, I mean, it sounds funny, but in some ways I'm doing something similar, only I'm not, I'm using different mechanisms. It's like I've, I've, I've been producing all kinds of stuff over time. And I'm just looking back, seeing what was what, what people found valuable. Yes. And I'm kind of pulling that together into hopefully something coherent. Uh, before I write my next book, I'm pulling the pieces that you know that seem valuable to people. And, and what are some of those pieces, like tell 
Oh, I think the biggest one is um, I, I wrote a book actually last year, which was just a compilation of a handful of the interviews I did on the Big Wise Telesummit, but they were interviews that people found particularly, that I got comments back on that people found particularly valuable. And so I just did a little book, I called it Entrepreneurs in the News Story. And a lot of the people that liked those particular videos were into new, new cosmology, new story kind of stuff. So they liked Drew Dellinger mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. So I put that together into a little book, which I never promoted. Um, in part because yeah, I don't remember. Seeing yeah, no, I didn't promote it, but I but I did it. Uh, and the reason I did it is because I had a class I was teaching at Holy Names University, and I wanted to have a a book to hand them. And it wasn't that hard to create it, so I I did that. Um, but what I found was that uh, I ended up over the last maybe two years doing a lot of business building kind of things, you know, helping people with their launches or helping this or helping that in marketing and doing this marketing and doing that marketing. But I never had my own product. I, the only product I had was the one I did with Katie Curtin, which was the summer book adventure and people liked it. It was a great little product, but we basically I was teaching them how to publish a book on yeah. Kindle and on create space. And, um, and I was writing my own book at the same time. So I was writing Entrepreneurs in the New Story while I was doing that. Anyway, so that was a popular little product, and I probably could have taken it somewhere, but then I saw all these courses coming out on writing their books. And, you know, if I had done it early enough, it would have been great. But I'm just seeing all the – everybody's doing it right. So I thought, well, I don't really want to – and there and there were some really good courses out there. So I thought, well, you know, if there's already something out there that's done well, I don't really want to put the energy into it into doing that I'm just I just did it because I was taking people on the journey with me right. and what I noticed is they really liked being on that journey they liked like like finding out what your process is right. and what you're thinking and that sort of thing and so that was kind of cool so I learned that and I then so um, masterful at facilitating people's transformation well and you know we're still doing the mastermind that we started last year wow yeah we've been doing it with uh, yeah so we're that's still going and uh, People are just, you know, we're, we're going a little deeper and making progress. Everybody's, everybody's starting to be accountable to what they say they're going to do. And, yeah. you know, it's, and it's just once a month we call, have a call. Got it. So it's been, it's been cool. Um, but what I realize is that my heart sings and lights up when I see people align with their purpose mm. and or find it, you know, mm. and what I realized is that my whole journey in life, I mean, I've had three or four times where I felt really super aligned knowing that I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, two of those three times, it was during a crisis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I knew what my next step was. I knew exactly what my work was at the time. I knew that I was meant to be doing it. And it just, if you look back or if I look backwards, I realized it gave me meaning. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard mm -hmm. and I got through it. Or whatever but it was and then but it's uh it gives you kind of that juice for really doing your best work and one of the times was when i was running for political office i just i knew i was meant to be doing it right. we started this whole movement yeah. it was just awesome yeah. and uh the second time i ran i didn't feel that same juice it was really harder to do yeah. um and I realized, man, I want the juice, you know, <laughs> I yeah. want to be right. aligned like that all the time. Yeah. What's the secret? So that's when I did the Big Y Tele Summit. I thought, well, I want to ask people what their secret is because, yes. you know, what makes you tick? Why are you doing what you're doing? Yes. What's, you know, and so uh, since that time between that Tele Summit and the Creativity Cafe and just random interviews on the radio and whatnot, I've probably interviewed over 50 people mm. just asking them those same questions like, how did you get started doing what you're doing? You know, what, you know, what's the why? You know, yes. what's the why? Yeah. And um, I've discovered a few things from those interviews and my own journey that I feel are worthy of sharing. And so um, I'll find out the kind of the best mechanisms for sharing that. But I feel like what I get excited about now is anytime I'm in a conversation where I'm just helping people figure that out. Yes. Yeah. So do you want to share any tidbits of what you're, what you've discovered? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Let me think about this. So probably one of the, um, one of the surprises was, you know, you, you look at people who have done great things yeah. 
and you automatically compare your little minuscule things to their, there's this comparison thing that goes on. It's right. like, they're so great, right? right? And you you hear their story and it's sort of implied or you think that they always knew from mm -hmm. the time they were very small, right. what their purpose was, what their why was. Yeah. And the reality is, is that most people um, don't know that. Most people that actually do great things do them um, because they don't compare themselves to other people. They're just following their curiosity and, and what's next for them. And they have this sort of little extra measure of courage mm. to just keep doing it even in the face of difficulty. Yeah. And so most people who've done great things, including Martin Luther King Jr. and, and mm -hmm. you know, folks like that, they didn't go out saying, I'm going to do this great thing. Right. They start out saying, this isn't right, or I need to do this because I'm staying, you know, they're in the moment taking a stand for what, what truly matters to them. And so what I realize is that you may never find your big why unless you look backwards at the story, ah. right? You might not see it in the moment and you might not even see it going forward, but you can definitely see the patterns looking backward and that, and you can also feel the energy in the moment that helps you know whether you're aligned. Like, yeah. And I think that is the, that's, I think that's a challenge for most people. Yeah, because they don't leave themselves space. Mm. Yeah, so the first thing for me, anyway, when I know I'm aligned is, um, actually, probably the first thing is I have indicators that tell me that I'm not, right? One of the indicators is I lose my sense of humor. Oh. Or another indicator is that I just feel awful. I just feel like some, like something isn't, right you know i'm not working on the right things my time is being wasted you know whatever the kind of that awful yeah. feeling that you get and the other thing i realize is that i might it, in my life i might look back and say well uh you know most of my life was spent in that state of not knowing my why but the reality was probably only about 20 percent of my life was spent like that it just feels like 80 percent because it feels so awful yeah to not be it's on purpose right to, yeah. to be aligned and so i realize that even it feels that awful then maybe i need to start paying attention to when i drift right and yeah so that's one of the big learnings the other one is that the mist that the fog that we get in or the confusion that we get in um is a choice hmm. in a way because we choose to focus on that and the reality is that you can't part it. You can't part the mist yourself. The mist parts for you mm. and the conditions are right. And if you try to part it, right. yeah. then it, if you just like try to part it, you're focusing on it and you're just, it's, you're like a fog machine. You're creating more fog. Now, is it our responsibility to create conditions that are right? Yes. That I really, that's sort of the underpinning of all this is like, how do you create the conditions? It's like soil building. How do you create the conditions that are and right? I think one of the ways to do that is the proper kind of self-care, right? Self-care, love, connection, mm. space, you know, creating space for yourself mm. to be, you know, being. A lot of people don't know how to be anymore. They're just doing. Yeah, they're doing a lot. Now, when you say love, uh, what does yeah. that mean? What does that mean? How, how, do, love. how do we... I think, well, you said self-care. I'm thinking love, love of yourself and love of others. And I think it starts with self-love, which means giving yourself what you need, time yeah. and space and uh, health and, you know, all the things that we, we sort of know we should be doing for ourselves. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Um, how much do you think, I mean, I'm just like you are in this topic of purpose, finding purpose. I've, I've realized that my work over the years, I thought my work was actually to help people find their purpose. I thought that was the case. Uh -huh. I'm realizing now that that's not actually what I'm good at or what I even want to focus on. I feel like my work is actually once someone finds their purpose, helping them, how do they then manifest that in a, in a business that's successful? Uh -huh. How do they grow that? So, yeah. So you're really not targeting people who don't know their purpose at all. Right. 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 You're targeting people. But, but, who do know what's interesting though, is I have this kind of, I, I, I'm seeing purpose as a bigger idea where really 
all of marketing is a business finding its purpose deeper and deeper and more and more true and yeah. expressing that is my perspective on it. So well, creating value, right? For real people. Yes. Yeah. And so then, so then my question is when someone's trying to find their purpose, how much is it about creating the space to sense their energy and to sense their, their true intentions and their true kind of yearnings? How much, and how much of it is getting signals from the external market, having conversations, seeing what people are asking them to do? Do you know what I do? You, yeah, I mean, you could, we could do a lot of navel gazing, right? Just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's a process. Some people get stuck in the doing. Yeah. And they don't have any being going on at all. So yeah. their doing is like very unstrategic. Right. Uh, I've been there too. Yeah. And, uh, and some people get stuck in the being. Mm. and just never put themselves out there in any courageous way. Um, yeah. They don't experiment. They don't try stuff. They don't, they don't want to fail. There's other, so everybody's sort of along that continuum. I mean, there is a continuum and some people get stuck in the procrastination piece yes. and some people get stuck in the never making space piece. Yeah. And I think some of us get stuck in either place, depending on, you know, right. our neuroses, right? Yes. Yeah, and we I think we need conversations with others who are willing to tell us the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if we don't have the, if we don't reach out and don't have those conversations, we could end up sort of in this endless loop of never yeah. never making anything or making a difference in any in any way. So I don't know the answer to the question except to say it's it's both, right? You can't it's yin and yang. You can't do one and not do it's like breathing. Yeah. You have to breathe out yes. in order to breathe in. Right. And you have to breathe in in order to breathe out. Right. If you only do one, you're not breathing, actually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Wow. Um, so what are you working on now? I mean, okay, so you're working on this book, which is, which is I am. Uh, I am. curating the best of the Tell Us Summit you did, the big why, as well right. as other interviews you've done. Right. And, is there an expectation when that book will be released and available? Oh, I'm hoping in July. Oh, okay. So yeah, pretty soon then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it, it might be, I, I guess to be fair to myself, I should say August 15th for the hardcover version of it. Right. Um, but the, but yeah. the ebook version will be ready. Soon. Yeah. It should be ready by August 1st ish. Where, 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 um, where should I be sending people to? Oh yeah. Um, well, you can always send them to denisrushing.com. Dot com. Yeah, you can send them there. Um, I I have secured the website Find Your Big Why. So Find Your Big Why. Find Your Big Why. Yeah. Um, I'm, but it's not up and running yet. Okay. Um, and what else I'm working on is Carol Cole Lewis and I have um, a little company that we're calling Product Frog. Yes. And uh, we have. Um, three or four uh, little, I'll call them little pieces of implementation that we'll do with people, uh, sort of a done with you kind of thing. It's helpful if they know their own market already and know what their, what their messaging is. Yeah. But if they don't know that, um, we, uh, and each of the pieces sort of has to have a strategic discussion around that because you can't do the marketing without having that discussion. Mm. But we have, We've been helping people on three or four things. One is I obviously can help people get their book published. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if it's a business building book or if it's their main idea and they want to get that out there, um, helping them not only with the online self-publishing, but the, um, the promotion plan around that. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have uh, a little webinar package helping people get their webinar actually produced, um, the script written and done and if they want uh, a, re a webinar produced right and then we have a little package that we've been doing on facebook advertising we've actually been oh. relatively successful at uh, pulling together facebook traffic into a um into a lead magnet and the lead i'll call it a lead magnet but you'll, usually it's a little quiz or app that is is really interesting around the topic mm -hmm. and if you can't come up with something that's interesting uh in that in that way, um, Facebook's probably not the best place to be. Right. Um, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it. The last one is I do have a little um, a little strategy session 
funnel or application that for those who are doing high end sales and they need just to automate that one little piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a few done with you things that will put systems in place, little marketing systems in place for people who hate to do the marketing systems. Nice. Um, yeah. Just little packages like that. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, yeah. And we prefer, I mean, we honestly prefer to work with mission driven innovators or entrepreneurs mission people who have a mission that matters to us um, and to the world I mean, those are the kind of people that we really enjoy helping so cool excellent yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah we're doing that and um that's those are probably the main offers that we have right now and i've kind of set myself a goal of uh creating a or at least having a couple of offers a week you know getting an offer out um, and I'm not saying out to a list, but out to individuals, you know, oh. usually the work we do is with one-on-one -on -one with people. We're not doing like a lot of mass marketing or anything like that. We're doing more one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, so you mean per week you're reaching out, you're giving, sending proposals to individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Just nice. reaching out, asking people if they want, you know, to have a conversation and then, yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. That's a great weekly, um, marketing activity. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy to not do it. So <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, excellent. Well, I think maybe I'll, I'll end the recording here and then mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue the conversation.